What's up everybody, it's Master Aquatics and I'm bringing you guys another video. Alright, I think that one's a little bit more better. Alright, so in this video, we are going to go over how I do maintenance for all of my tanks. Every single tank that I owned, starting with the big tank ending with the small tanks. Actually, I think it might be the other way around. Anyways, what you're looking at right now is my 20 gallon fry tank. I still have not released a video of me setting up this tank. I will do that soon. I'm just waiting until I set up this other tank to show you guys. I still have a tank that I need to set up. I have my batch of angelfish fry in here. They're about two and a half, three months old. They are growing pretty slow, but they are showing nice coloration and I really like the way they look so far. Some of them are a little bit bigger than the others, um, but that's pretty common when it's... Uh, excuse me guys, I know that was kind of rude and disrespectful and very unprofessional while doing this YouTube thing. But it, what I was going to say is it's very common when you're growing out fry that you have some bigger than the other ones. So that's the update on them. And this is my 125 gallon tank. I don't know why the shift in tone of voice there. Something happened. I can't explain it. But my angelfish are doing great. They're eating bloodworms. They're still healthy. Um, and they're just doing absolutely fantastic. And they're only going to get better because they are angelfish from Master Aquatics. And Master Aquatics is the master of fish keeping. Well, maybe just angelfish keeping. But... They are doing well. Just wanted to repeat that again. I know I repeated that a few times earlier, but hey, what the hey. But bloodworms is like the only things I've been really feeding them now. And flakes, I haven't really been feeding them anything else. I usually feed them like krill, ghost shrimp, pellets, things of that nature. Nah, I've just been going old school and just going with the flakes and bloodworms. Now, these guys are pretty aggressive right now i did solve that issue but they were aggressive and i couldn't figure out why until i realized they can see all these baby angelfish on the other side of their glass the baby angelfish can't see them but they can see the baby angelfish and i'm not sure they were just being aggressive because they realized that there's a tank full of their kids next door or because they were small fish and they wanted to just eat them but regardless, this was keeping them from laying eggs for me and doing what they're supposed to do. Um, so I was going to cover up that barrier between them with a piece of paper so they can't see the other side. Um, and I'm going to clean their tank. I tried feeding them some bloodworms. They weren't interested. First tank I cleaned is the 125 gallon tank. I always clean this tank out first. I always drain about 75% or 50% of the water in this tank. This tank is the one that I put a lot of focus and attention to because it is my show tank. It's the tank that represents me as a hobbyist. So I always, always, always take care of this tank first. I also want to point out that the plants are doing so well in this tank. A little bit of algae here and there, but other than that, these plants are growing. They are taking off. It's been since like April since I've added most of these plants. I will put some links in the description so you guys can go back and watch those videos if you'd like. You don't have to, but hey, just putting it out there. Um, a lot of these plants came from Buse plants and they are doing well. A uh, 29 gallon tank has this plastic lid and I always clean it. And I always drain the 29 gallon tank to about... I would say 60%. Uh, the 29 gallon tank is where my angelfish pair live. Um, and I always take care of their tank too because I want to make sure that they always have clean water so they can always lay eggs for me. They also dirty up their tanks the fastest so I always have to clean their tank. Now the 20 gallon tank where my fry are, I don't use the python water changer to clean out their tank because they are still small and I use a siphon and a bucket to clean out their tank and sometimes when I do that they get sucked up but luckily they just go into a white bucket and I just net them out later on this is why I don't use a python because if I were to use a python they would die and disappear if they were to get accidentally sucked up with this method that's not going to happen I've been using that method for the longest time and it's always worked for me I've never killed a fry by accidentally sucking them while doing this method 
the 10 gallon tank where I have a batch of baby blue uh, Philippine blue angelfish I clean out their tank the same way uh, I love cleaning out this tank it is very easy to do very low maintenance and that's how I clean my first four tanks all right guys so it's a beautiful morning and I'm going to continue cleaning all of my tanks so I know I was doing a, a voiceover before but now I think we're gonna switch it up and I'm going to be talking into my camera but you guys have seen me do this plenty of times so if you don't know what I'm doing I'm doing a water change for my tanks um, this is how I set up my Python water changer I just hook it up to a hose like that one right there if you want more information on how I do this you can check out the description I got some links to some water change videos where I go full in depth of how to do the perfect water change for your little fishies so let's go ahead and wrap this up I only got two more tanks to do and I am done with this video all right time to get my hose my hose yep this hose is definitely long enough so I'm just gonna grab my hose and put my hose over her and then I'm going to get this end right here and I'm just gonna attach it to this end right here okay all right, so I just got my hose attached, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this on, and then we are ready to clean the tanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Now we got my water running. Now it's time to do the dirty work. Let's do it. All right, guys, so the next tank we are going to clean is my 75-gallon tank. As you guys may or may not know, I got seven baby angelfish in here. Well, they're not really babies anymore. They're kind of big now. Um, they're growing pretty slow. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I don't really do too many water changes in here. Maybe like once every two to three weeks. I don't really need to do big water changes for this tank. It's because these guys are really small and they have a lot of space in here and there's only seven of them in here. Now if I had like maybe like a hundred angelfish in here then I would probably have to clean this tank and maintain it and do a lot more maintenance. But you know just seven little angelfish in here um, so this tank is gonna be really easy to clean I'm just gonna drain it to about 25 percent and uh, we will be good after that another thing I want to mention is that I really don't like using the Python water changer for doing water changes for my baby angelfish tank because there's always a chance of them getting sucked up in through here um, but right now I'm closely monitoring this and watching it closely just to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, when they get a little bit bigger, they're smart enough not to do that. But right now, you know, they're feisty little piggy, curious little angelfish. So they're definitely going to check this out every now and then and possibly get sucked up. So that's why I'm here. I should probably go in there and get rid of this uh, sponge or this cover over my filter because it's... I'm getting away of making sure that I get crystal clear water. Um, plus, it's really dirty. I gotta go in there and, and get it out. So, but I think I'll have to do that another time. Right now, I just want to do like a quick water change. I'm not gonna do like a huge water change because that could possibly shock them. Like I said, they don't need a big water change. All right, next up is my 20 gallon tank where I got my blue platinum marble and my koi angelfish that's hiding behind my big sponge filter you can't really see them i also have a video where i got these guys and you guys can check that video out down in the description as always uh, these guys i don't think they're gonna cause me too much problem i think they're smart enough to not go near this thing oh and there's my koi look how beautiful that koi is um, i'm not sure if that's a male or female i've only had these guys for about two weeks now uh, probably less than two weeks to be honest um, so I don't know I haven't uh, came up with a uh, with a conclusion whether or not if they are male or female but uh, hopefully they are a pair they haven't really been aggressive with each other uh, the past two weeks and they've been doing great they've been eating a lot um, they're extremely healthy their fins look good um, I just got to make sure that I give them clean water and eventually I am going to uh, give them a better tank oh and my filter just turned off 
I'm an idiot. I didn't turn off my, I didn't unplug my filter. So now it's going to run dry and possibly ruin. So let's go ahead and take care of that. There we go. Unplug. So I finally unplugged my filter. Now I just got to drain out my water. It's really hard to do a water change and, and film at the same time, guys. Um, I'm not sure where my tripod is. I kind of did this all in a hurry. So um, I got lots that I need to do. So I'm trying to finish up this video for you guys. But I'm only going to drain about, what, maybe 75% of the water. So maybe down to here. And uh, the tank will be fine after that. So I am going to come back whenever this uh, water is drained. And I'll see you guys here in the next few seconds. Alright guys, so I finally drained the amount of water that I needed. And I am now currently filling the water back up. Uh, this is going to take about, I would say like 5 minutes tops because this is only a 20 gallon tank, um, it's not that big. Now usually when you have a tank and you're putting water back in here, you don't want to run this thing full blast. It causes a lot of pressure, especially in small tanks, it could damage the fish. But I am a master, whether you guys think it or not. So these guys were smart enough, because I've trained them well, to stay right here. Um, and stay away from this. So that's why I have it on full, full blast. Usually, I'll have it like this. Where it's just kind of like running slow. Like I do this for my fry tanks. Because, you know, fry are, you know, they're little rebels. But for this tank right now, I'm just going to do a full blast. I'm trying to get this done as fast as I can. Because, you know, I have lots of stuff that I need to do for you guys. And I can't wait. I'm excited. But... As soon as it's done filling up, we will head over to the 75 gallon tank and we will fill that aquarium up as well. Alright guys, they finally got some new clean water. So, I mean the water is still kind of cloudy, you can't really see it on camera. Well yeah you can, you can definitely see all that stuff floating around in there. Um, but my filter is going to take care of this here in an hour or so. This is common whenever I do a water change, um, some of the stuff floats up towards the surface of the water and then my filter catches all that stuff um, but yeah so they are going to be fine I'm gonna feed them here in a little bit but right now what I'm doing is I am now currently filling up my 75 gallon tank um, this one I also have full blast I want to fill this up as fast as I can uh, my baby angels they are right here they are fine I am dosing prime while I'm doing this a lot of people say do not do this. This is what I've been doing the past three years. Um, I've never had any fish die on me for doing this. Um, I just fill water and I put prime in here as I'm doing it. But the safest way to do this is to prepare some water in a huge tub or bucket and prime it or dechlorinate it or condition it, uh, the water, 24 hours prior before putting water back into your tank. I don't do that, I don't have time for that, and I also don't have a large bucket or tub to prepare water in. So I just dose prime while I'm while I'm filling up water in my tank. So just this is what I'll do. Is I'll take off the cap for my prime. And also I just poke a hole in my prime seal. So that way I don't waste too much of it and then I just put a few drops. You only really need a few drops every few minutes or so because Prime is so powerful. That's why I always use Prime because for me, it's the number one water conditioner in my opinion. Um, I don't think I, I'm not gonna say I don't trust any other brands, but this is the brand that I've been using for so long and it's always worked for me and I feel like it's the best. If you're new to the hobby and you want a water conditioner, I, I suggest getting this one. There's a link in the description that you can click on to actually order some of these on Amazon. Just make sure to check the description. Alright guys, so I just went ahead and I cleaned the tank. Um, again, this is the tank is going to be a little bit cloudy and there's going to be some debris floating around, but not to worry, in about an hour my filter would take care of that. Um, if you guys have any questions on cleaning fish tanks, just let me know. Um, these are all the tanks that I own and this is how I take care of them and maintain them. Um, make sure to watch the previous videos, the links are in the description. And my name is Master Aquatics and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and bye.
Thank you, young God, for the blessing, ayy.